excited you came. I'm so happy to see you. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You, you are the body of Christ gathered here at this time and in this place. You are the physical presence of Jesus here in New Orleans. And I'm thankful that you are here. My name is Mike. I'm the bishop of this synod, and my job is to do three things. It is to say welcome to you for being here. It's to tell you a little bit about this city that you're going to be in, living in for the next four days. And it's also to share a little bit about the theme with you, citizens with the saints. So first of all, we're going to be doing three things. We're going to practice peacemaking, we're going to practice discipleship, and we're going to practice justice. And we're going to practice because we are not experts yet. We are students, and students practice, 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 practice. We're going to practice peacemaking. And, and to help us practice peacemaking, we have an outstanding peacemaker who's going to be with us, Lema Bowie, who won the Nobel Peace Prize for her peacemaking work in Liberia that, 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 that participated in the end of a, of a terrible and bloody civil war. We are going to learn from her together. We're going to learn from Nadia tonight. We're going to learn from some other phenomenal speakers. But we are not just going to talk about peacemaking. We're going to practice peacemaking. We're going to go over to that convention center, and we're going to practice peacemaking through play, music, art, drama, dance, Interactive Centers, Global Mission, we are going to give blood. We're going to give 900 gallons of blood. Some of you are going to leave your blood here. We are going to give hair. We're going to give 300 heads of hair. And then we are going to practice discipleship. And there are seven basic practices of discipleship that we're going to work on together. Seven things that, that mature people of faith do. Pray, worship, serve, study, give, invite, and encourage. But we're not just going to talk about these things. We're going to go out into the world and do them. We're going to go out into the city and practice our faith together. We're going to practice justice as well, too. This city has reached out its arms to you. If you've seen the posters around, the welcome signs everywhere, do you feel the love? This city is, is ready for you to be here. They're excited. They are so excited that you are here. So we're going to love them back. You brought one million books with you. That's incredible. This is a city of 500,000 people. You are already making a difference because illiteracy and poverty are tied together. You are making a difference. You're going to read to children. You're going to put together book packs for third and fourth graders. You're going to work in the city. And you know what? You're not going to do anything that God is not already doing here. God is already here in this city. We're just participating in the work that God is doing. It's God's work and it's... Oh, yeah. I got to tell you a story. 36 years ago, I was in high school. I know it's hard to believe. And I got in a van with a group of kids from my church, and we drove from Grand Blanc, Michigan, right down to New Orleans. Uh-oh. And, and I drove right here. We drove right here to this Superdome in New Orleans. We came right in through that door right over there, and I stood right there in the Superdome. And this event had a profound effect on my life. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember that there was a fountain right over there. 
And one of the members of our youth group was baptized in that fountain. What I want to say to you is that God is going to use you to make a difference in New Orleans, and God is going to use New Orleans to make a difference in you. And you are never going to be the same. Some of you will have a life-changing experience. Some of you will have a life-altering experience. But every one of you, and this is my promise to you, every one of you will remember this event for the rest of your lives. You're going to have an impact on this city, and this city is going to have an impact on you. So let's talk about this city a little bit. I, you know, New Orleans is weird. It just is. I mean, you know, you got the masks, you got the beads, you got the Mardi Gras, you got fantastic food, you got music, all kinds of weird languages going on. You have different. This is a weird city, and I started to wonder what makes this city so weird. And so I did what you would probably do. I, I, I googled it. And I looked at, I just read article after article and after article, and I learned something really interesting. First of all, that the port of southern Louisiana is the, is the largest port in the United States. More tonnage comes through here than any other place. It comes in to the Gulf of Mexico, and it goes up into the country from there. And then I learned that in the 17 and 1800s, you know what the number one import was? Slaves. This city had the largest slave market in the United States. And you can walk, it's just a few blocks away to the place where people were auctioned off, where children were taken from their families and sold for a couple hundred dollars. And that's hard to listen to, it's hard to think about, but it's, it's the truth, it's part of the history of this place. And it's the way that, that people were treated in this city that has started to mold where this city was. It is the pain, it's the racism, it's the discrimination, it's the suffering in this place. And then after, after the Civil War, the, the slaves were freed, but many of them continued to work on the same plantations for almost nothing. So we had a system of where there was a wall between races. And we had a system where there was a wall between those who had and those who did, had not, between rich and poor. And the discrimination continued. In fact, the schools were segregated until 1960. But here's, here's another weird thing about this city, and this is a contradiction. This city also had the largest population of free people of color, prosperous people of color. And so when, when, that, when the slaves were freed and, that, and, and, and all that stuff happened, an amazing thing happened. If, when you take... Um, all that suffering and all that pain and all that discrimination and all that racism and you put it together and you mix it with the diversity, the cultural diversity that is this city and then you mix it with African rhythms and Acadian music from Canada and spicy music from, from the Caribbean, all of a sudden it created an utterly new art form called jazz. New Orleans is the birthplace of jazz. And I think this is a theology of the cross moment because here's what happens. God can take our brokenness and make something magnificent out of it. God can take the brokenness and the hurt and the suffering in your life and in our lives together and make a masterpiece out of it. And that is the good news of the gospel that we celebrate in this place. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. But here's the problem. The world does not see it that way. The world does not always see you as salt and light. In fact, sometimes they see Christians as judgmental, hypocritical, self-righteous. You know what I'm talking about. You're in high school. And if you say you're a Christian, you know what people think. So we're going to show the world a Jesus that is humble. We're going to show the world that following Christ is about serving. It is about caring for strangers. It is about giving without expecting anything in return. We live in a world where people are divided by the color of their skin. We're going to show them a Jesus that tears down those dividing walls. We live in a world that is divided into insiders and outsiders. But we're going to show them a Jesus who unites them, 
who says there are no longer strangers, there are no longer aliens, we are all one. The, the passage in Ephesians that we're studying together this week says that Jesus is our peace. He tore down the dividing wall of hostility between us and made us all into one humanity. And so there are no longer outsiders, there are no longer strangers, there are no longer aliens, for we are all citizens together with the saints in the kingdom of God. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do this week. I want you to try an experiment with me. Let's live as if there aren't any walls. Let's pretend they don't even exist. Let's create a bubble here in New Orleans where there are no walls between rich and poor. There are no walls between races. And if you see those walls starting to come up, those walls of fear and suspicion, pull them down and reach out to that person on the other side and embrace them. Embrace that stranger. And when you get home, don't let those walls go back up. What if we lived the rest of our lives as if those walls didn't exist? Can you catch the vision of Ephesians? A new humanity altogether. That's the invitation that comes to us today. So, I don't know why you came. I don't know who convinced you to come, but I am deeply grateful that you came. So I ask you to commit to this moment. Make it count. Commit to yourself that you're going to grow. Allow the Holy Spirit to grow you in discipleship, to grow you in peacemaking, to grow you in, in being all about justice. Let's roll up our sleeves together. Let's be the church that rolls up its sleeves and, and gets to work in the world. Thank you very much. I love you. Thank you for being here. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Thank you.